Our goal is to model a conceptual mass in the project environment. That's called an in-place mass. I have a couple of masses in here already, and we're going to do a third. Before we get started, I want you to show you what we have already. So we've got four levels, level one, two, three, and roof. They are set at various different heights at this point. The two masses that I've created were hosted on level one, so they're locked down there on level one. The building mass two, the top of it has been restricted to level two, and the building mass three, the top of it has been restricted to level roof. And that means that if I move various levels, so if I were to move this level up, right, that top of that mass rides with that level, and if I move this one, the top of that mass rides with that level. We want to create a mass here that goes in between level two and three. Um, so <clears throat> we'll go ahead and do that. Um, and then we'll lock those that to these two levels. And you can see how that works. Okay. Now let's go to our 3D view. So I'm going to go close mine, this elevation. It'll flip back to my 3D parallel view. If you need to get to your 3D parallel view, you can come in here to the quick access toolbar and select default 3D view. Okay, so go to the massing and site tab. And let's take a look at the show mass form and floors option, which is turned on right now. If I go here and turn it off to show or go to show mass by view settings, my masses go away because this view is actually um, in the visibility graphics not showing masses. So if I type VV and I scroll down a little bit, you'll see that mass is not checked in this view. So I'm just going to cancel out of that. Revit has this ability or this setting to show mass form and floors and that will turn your masses on in all views. So that's a good thing to know about. I'm going to just go to show mass by view settings for right now. And what we want to do is create an in-place mass here. So if I left click on in place mass, it's going to turn on the show mass mode. So it's actually going to turn that on for us because we're creating a mass. So I'm going to go ahead and hit close here and say thank you Revit for turning on my masses. And I'm going to name this mass building 03 and click OK. And it's going to take us into the conceptual mass sketch mode which means we're in a subroutine in the project and we cannot have access to the other project options until we either accept or cancel the changes that we make here. So the first thing that Revit wants us to do is create a profile basically for our mass. So I'm going to go here to my line command and when I select that we're going to get a whole bunch of different options up here um, and up here. I want to create this line on level 2. Okay, So I'm just going to come down here and switch to level two and you're going to watch that blue plane kind of flip up. You see this outline? I can go back to level one and it'll flip down to level one and then if I select level two it'll flip up to level two. So that's basically our working plane. And you'll see that draw on work plane is selected which is very nice. It will let us draw only on that work plane and not snap to anything else. If you wanted to host this profile to a face. You could select this draw on face and it would draw on any face that you selected, but we don't. We want to work on a plane. So we're going to go ahead and come down here and I'm going to draw an L that sort of wraps around. Actually let's do an L that wraps around maybe here around the back and then that way. So I'll just start with a line here and it'll snap to anything on the second level click there and kind of spin around, click there, and click on, I don't know, I'll come a little bit further out past this bar, come a little bit past the red, and you can see these blue alignment lines allow you to know when you're orthogonal, and then come out and click and close. And just to show you what I made, I'm going to select it, and there's a little pair of sunglasses down here, and I'm going to isolate that element. So I just drew an L shape. It didn't keep it in any particular size. I'm going to reset the temporary height isolate. Now I come in here, I'm going to tab. I'm just going to tap on the tab key and as I tab, tap on it, it's going to give me different selection options. So the whole line or just the individual. And if I pick the individual, it's going to give me these little listening dimensions. 
and I can actually change those. So I could say if I wanted that to be 20 feet, I could change that to 20. And you want to pick what you want to move. So if I pick this line, I can change that to 15 feet. Right, so you can update where these lines are going. So maybe I want this one to come out over the top of the train track, so I'll put 50 on that one, right? So now I've got that set up. So now what I want to do is create a form. So if I select that and I go to create form, Revit comes in and selects what it thinks it can make out of that particular profile, which in this case is an extrusion. And you'll notice with the extrusion we get a little listening dimension over here that allows us to change the height of it. Well, what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to restrict the top of this to level 3. So to do that, I'm going to go to my east elevation. I'm going to zoom in. So you can see here's the thing I just created. And I'm going to hit, I'm going to type in AL for align. And this is the align command. You can also select that button. And what you want to pick first when you are doing the align command is the thing that you want to stay in place, the, basically the driver. So this is the driver, which is level three. And the thing that's going to be driven, so passenger seat, right, is the top of this mass. So I'm going to left click on that, and it's going to snap it down there and give me a lock option. And I'm going to lock it. And now that's locked to that level. Okay. Now if I, if I pick on it, it'll show that lock. Right, so when you pick on things, it'll definitely show whether it's locked or not. You could unlock it, right, and now you could move that edge off of there. But we want to keep it, keep it locked. Okay, so now if I go to finish mass, and I have now have access to the things in my project environment, like my levels, I can pick that level and move that level up and that mass will move with it, or if I move level two, right, the mass will move with it. Now, just to go a little bit further, and this is something you don't have to do, you can actually come in, and if I go to my annotate, I can actually put some aligned dimensions on these levels, right? And I can equal them out, so now they're all equal. Right, so you click on that equal, and that'll just equal them out between the top one and the bottom one. So in this case, if I unclick the equal, it'll go back. So it's 11 foot 10 between those. But if the equal is selected, and I move this top one, right, all of them adjust for that. You can also sort of come in and, you know, if you put this on here, you could come in and change that to 12, right, and they will adjust to 12, but see how that's popping that up off? It actually pulled the bottom up off of the level 1 off of the bottom to 4 foot 6, so you don't really want to do that. So I'll undo that. But let's see if we did the same thing down here, right, and then we pick that one and change that to 12 it's going to pull that whole shift down and make them all 12. So some different things that you can do to control these things. I'm just going to delete these for right now. And it's going to say, do you really want to do this? You can unconstrain that equality or you can actually delete the dimensions and it will continue to hold that constraint. I'm just going to say unconstrain for right now. So, all right, so that's getting that guy in there. Um, I'm going to stop right now and then we'll come back and manipulate this form.